I'm Adam Zucker. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick BJ and I get you caught up on today's championship action, including Oklahoma avenging their only loss. Kyler Murray, three touchdown passes, two to Grant Calcaterra. They take it over Texas 39-27 for their fourth straight Big 12 title. SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper has us at halftime. 21 to 14, Georgia leading top ranked Alabama. And it also brings us to our halftime festivities. And that means the tuition giveaway presented by Dr. Pepper. Contest rules, pretty easy. Whoever makes the most throws into the giant Dr. Pepper can wins $100,000 in tuition from Dr. Pepper as I send it to my partner, Jimmy Ordahl. All right, Atlanta, to open today's halftime festivities, Dr. Pepper and the SEC are proud to present the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. In just a moment, our two contestants, Ali, uh, excuse me, Natanya Kiros and Alina Scarlett, will be throwing footballs into the giant Dr. Pepper cans behind us. And Natanya wants to use the tuition if she wins to go to nursing school, and Alina wants to pursue her passion for speech pathology. Natanya, I'll ask you, what does this moment feel like to you? It's exhilarating and I'm just excited and feeling so blessed to be here. And Alina, what would it mean for you if you were able to win this money and pursue your passion? I'm just so excited. Dr. Pepper has been more than generous through this whole experience and they're really changing people's lives. All right, we're about to get set up. Let's get them excited, everybody. Let's go. Now, whoever makes the most throws into the giant Dr. Pepper can wins and will take home $100,000 in tuition. The runner-up will take home $25,000 in tuition. So, Natanya, Alina, are you ready? Officials, are you ready? All right, three, two, one. Now, these two ladies competed in the semifinal yesterday to put them in the final today for the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. You see these counters in the middle as Alina has taken an early start, but 30 full seconds they have here. This money goes a long way for these two ladies. They've come a long road, and it's getting closer as we get near the end. A close one, 12-9. Alina Scarlett has won the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Congratulations. Are you going to go right over? Now I want to introduce uh, the CEO of the Chief Sales Officer of Dr. Pepper, Jim Trevilcock. Alina, congratulations. On behalf of Dr. Pepper and all our Dr. Pepper bottlers, here is a check for a scholarship money for $100,000. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Natanya has also won $25,000 today, so she also gets to pursue her dream. But Alina, $100,000. Tell us a little bit about what you want to do in speech pathology. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to go to grad school. Um, this will help pay for that. I want to work with people who've had um, strokes and brain traumas, but I'm just so thankful. I want to say thank you to the Lord um, and to my family, my little sisters, Ava and Edie, um, and to Dr. Pepper um, and Mr. Trebilcock. They're so generous, and the love they have for students is just amazing. I don't know of any other company like that. I'll never drink another soda brand my whole life. <laughs> oh, you couldn't have said it better yourself, Alina and Jim Trebilcock. Thank you. Since 2008, Dr. Pepper has awarded over $10 million in tuition to deserving students. Once again, congratulations. <laughs> I think Alina was seven for seven to start things off. She said Dr. Pepper's been more than generous. They just got a lot more generous. 100,000 congratulations. Geico Halftime Report's coming up next. Sports presents the Geico Halftime Report. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. All right, hello everyone and welcome to the Geico Halftime Report. I'm Adam Zucker with the score here in Atlanta, Georgia, on top of Alabama, 21 to 14. The million dollar band is on the field and ironically, 
They're playing bridge over troubled water. They did not decide to play that while we watched the first half, but there you go. I'm joined by Rick Neuheisel and Brian Jones. I mean, is this a conference championship game or a national championship game? Well, it's an incredible game, and what's been really incredible to watch is Alabama stub its toe. They're well known for being fundamentally sound. They've had miscue after miscue. The interception in the red zone by Tua Tagovailoa. You've had three drops by pretty sure-handed receivers. Well, let me say this. There's no question they're a little bit sloppy, but I'm going to say the committee's going to be hard-pressed to find three teams better than either one of these teams right now. They're playing outstanding. And how about Jake Fromm in the first half? You talk about being surgical. His ability to find the open receiver and throw them open. Look at this back shoulder throw right here to J.J. Holloman. That's the only place you can put it. He gets a great read here on cover two. You can see the safety splitting. He finds his tight end right down the middle, Brian. Not a perfectly thrown pass. I'm having fond memories of Monty Kiffin's told you and showing us how to play that cover two. Dylan Moses did not play it correctly. But how about the running game of Georgia? DeAndre Swift is a beat. Patience, then first into the end zone, then wide open. This hot Blue Point Bama defense has been confused throughout the first half. And look at Fromm's first uh, first down passing numbers, four of five, over eight yards a carry. And what that means is they're able to stay on the field. 21 minutes of possession time in the first half. That's how to play defense against this Alabama offense. Keep your offense on the field. That's right. Let's go Let's go retro, Bama. How about the running game? Josh Jacobs, former three-star. Well, he's playing like a six-star in this one. Beautiful run here to set up his first touchdown. That's how they run the rock in the SEC. And then a 59-yard scamper here to set up his second touchdown a few plays later. He actually has a miscue, yeah. fumbles into the end zone, and immediately atones for it by gathering the fumble, holding it long enough for the touchdown to go on the board for the Crimson Tide. And it was an amazing reaction when they announced the results of their review because one shade of red celebrated thinking it was the fumble, then the other shade of red erupted because it was a Bama touchdown. How does Bama get back on top in this thing? Well, they just got to clean things up. As Brian pointed out, there were a lot of miscues, some just easily dropped balls that just everybody just focus, calm down a little bit. They certainly have the wherewithal to get back into this. And, and defensively, you saw them confused at different times after. I've never seen an Alabama defense as discombobulated. The last couple drives, they stopped Georgia. Georgia, I think they need to hang their head on running the ball and throwing on first down. That's where they're sharpening their petrels. They lost the edge of their defense, and Nick Saban's in there right now grinding to find out how they're going to maintain contain. Yeah, well, they're coming off a season low of offensive yardage for a first half as well, so it's both sides. All right, next Saturday, be sure to join us for an American tradition, the 119th Army-Navy game presented by USAA. The game's at 3. Our coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern. Heisman finalists in the studio. When we come back, we'll update you on other championship game action and talk about how it all affects the college football playoff selection tomorrow when the Geico Halftime Report continues. The SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Jared. Geico. The Home Depot. And by Dr. Pepper. Welcome back to the Geico Halftime Report. A reminder, Wednesday night on CBS Sports Network, it's college basketball doubleheader. The action tips off at 8 Eastern with Oklahoma State and Tulsa, followed by Arkansas and Colorado State. All right, we got a good one here, but we got to hit the scoreboard. Big 12 championship game. Sooners going for their fourth straight outright. BJ, the defense stepping up against your Longhorns. They did step up, but it was a little too late. Oh, you get a big touchdown there with two minutes left in the ball game. They would go on to beat my Longhorns. The 12th total Big 12 title for the Sooners. My horns, 13 penalties for 120 yards. You wouldn't win a cornhole game with penalties like that. Ooh, they also got a big safety when it was a three-point game, but they need some help. We'll talk about that in a sec. Meanwhile, UCF undefeated, but of course, no more Mackenzie Milton, and Memphis is running all over them. Right? It's been all about running back Daryl Henderson here. He bursts through the line. He cuts back. 
back and goes the distance. 82 yards for a touchdown. His third score of the half. 207 yards at the half on just 10 carries. An unbelievable first half. And here come the Knights. Yeah, Knights have uh, rallied back a little bit. 38-28 here in the American Athletic Conference Championship. But they needed uh, a lot more help and a lot more respect uh, at this point. They also needed Mackenzie Milton. Oklahoma at number five. Oklahoma, they're one of those teams that you always hear about complaining about Alabama. They're rooting for Alabama to come back and win this game because they need help. There is no question that they're sitting comfortably, but not too comfortably, because what you're seeing right now is a great display of two really good football teams. Obviously, 30 more minutes to come, and Ohio State now knows they got to go heavy on the gas pedal tonight against Northwestern. Well, Oklahoma sitting there saying, hey, we have an offense that almost took down Georgia a year ago when they had a better defense than they've been employed this season so they think they can score on either one of these teams and they're hoping the offense will be able to carry today and get them in to the dance here next week and what if unlike in the national championship games georgia is able to hold on and beat alabama today are the tied in with a loss I don't think there's any way you can keep Alabama out. It's been since 1888 that somebody went the entire season beating everybody by 20 or more points. Yale did it. I mean, Yale did it in 1888. I was five. Right? <laughs> these, these games are about brute force. They have the complete package, especially offensively. So I'm with you, Rick. As much as I hate it because I believe in conference titles, I, I would have to agree that both would get in. Yeah, their job is to pick the four best teams, and two of them might be right behind us right now. Okay, there's been some coaching news. Uh, there's been some talk about Urban Meyer after next year. In the meantime, Mac Brown, Les Miles, they're bringing, they're bringing them all back. They're bringing the band back together. The old boys are getting another bite at the apple. That's fantastic news. And both these staffs have guys, right? Mike Loxley, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, is being rumored at Maryland. And we've got uh, Mel Tucker at Georgia being rumored at Colorado. A little bit more faith in Mac Brown going to North Carolina from whence he came, you know, prior to the Texas stint, then less miles there at Kansas. That's a tough road to hoe there in Lawrence. Yeah, we'll see if he can do it. And a lot more moves still to be made. A reminder, the NFL on CBS kicks off tomorrow with regional action. Many will see the Chiefs and Raiders. It all gets started at noon Eastern with the NFL today. And JB and the guys will have the latest on Kareem Hunt throughout the day. We thank you for watching the Geico Halftime Report. Coming up, Brad, Gary, and Jamie are back with the second half of Alabama and Georgia in the SEC Championship. Enjoy the rest of the game. CBS Sports presents the Geico Halftime Report. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.